This is the Halicrafter station. A little bit of history. Back in 1959, Collins came out with uh, an important transceiver, the uh, KWM2, but it did not have receiver independent tuning. In 1961, Halicrafters came out with this transceiver, the SR150. This is the world's first modern single sideband transceiver. It has receiver independent tuning here. So you turn that on and then you can tune the receiver independently of this tuning, which sets the transmitter. And then we turn that off, you're back on a synchronized receive and transmit system. So this is the world's first modern transceiver. Then a year later, uh, 1962, Halicrafters made the separate fixed station uh, equipment, the SX-117 receiver. Power supply, low band uh, tuner, and the HT-44 single sideband transmitter using the phasing method, not the filter method, the phasing method. This is a filter rig, the SR-150. But this was a phasing method and uh, has excellent audio quality because of that for single sideband, very unusual. Um, so yeah, this is the uh, Halicrafters line. It's sort of like a Collins, uh, another uh, Collins type uh, level of uh, technology and, and quality. So this is, uh, it's basically a Collins S line, but by Halicrafters, extremely, uh, interesting equipment, uh, 1962, uh, and it was in production until 63, um, this unit here, until 1963, it was not in production very long, 61, 62, 63, and then these, these uh, receiver and transmitter were in production from 62 through 65. Um, now, one interesting thing about this receiver and the receiver in this transceiver, they're extremely low noise units. If you take the antenna off, you just connect the uh, antenna connector and turn up the RF and AF gains, hardly any sound at all comes out of the loudspeaker, almost nothing. And as soon as you put the antenna on, you get huge audio coming out, which is all noise from the antenna and the atmospherics. So it is an actually very, very quiet receiver, especially on the high frequencies. They're very sensitive and very quiet receivers. It's noticeably different uh, than the Drakes that I also have. The Drake uh, R4B and the T4X uh, transmitter. These are extremely quiet uh, receivers. And this is the Loudon Boomer amplifier which Halicrafters purchased from that company and then put their own name on shortly thereafter. And this is a 1000 watt PEP input uh, a linear amplifier. Now if we go back a little bit earlier, before this Halicrafter station was available, so we're talking about the mid-50s, 1955, the National NC300 receiver came out, and this is a dream receiver, it's an amateur band only receiver, it's got uh, Beautiful uh, tuning dial. And uh, you can read here, it covers 160 through 11 and 10 meters, because they had an 11 meter amateur band at that time. It's dual conversion with an 80 kilohertz second IF. And uh, there were accessories available, uh, six meters, two meters, and one and a quarter meters, 220 to 225 megahertz converters. And uh, they have very low noise figures, very low noise figures, considering they're vacuum tubes. And that they're housed in this unit here. They're crystal controlled converters with an IF of 30 to 35 megahertz, which is one of the band positions on here. So it's the dials, it's a drum dial, and it's already set up for the bands 20 meters, 15 meters, 10 meters. Um, that looks like that one there is 11 meters, 10 meters, and then we have. 6 meters, uh, 2 meters, and the uh, one and a quarter meter, 220 to 225 megahertz band. So the receiver is all set up to operate, and it's extremely sensitive, and uh, it has excellent selectivity. 
And then uh, in 1958, uh, this unit was out of production and they went to the NC-303. Uh, very similar, except there are some improvements. The, uh, <clears throat> the second mixer is crystal controlled. It also has an 80 kilohertz second IF and a Q multiplier rather than a crystal filter at uh, the first IF. 20, this one has a crystal filter. The NC300 has a crystal filter at 2215 kilohertz. So you have the traditional uh, phasing control and selectivity control in addition to the selectivity control of the 80 kilohertz IF, the second IF. So you have two, two selectivity controls. Okay, on the NC303, there's just one selectivity control, the 80 kilohertz IF, and then you have the Q multiplier, which is set up just for the notch. So that you can set, set the frequency of the notch and the depth of the notch, you can tune them there. And uh, this, the AGC also on single sideband position, just like the uh, NC300, you have AM, SSB, and CW. In the single sideband position, you have a long de delay or decay time on the AGC, whereas this one has fast AGC. And in fact, the AGC is actually turned off in the CW mode. Um, so that you use the RF gain uh, 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 lower and uh, you lower the RF gain and increase the audio gain. The NC300 also has something interesting which the NC303 does not have and that is on the audio frequency gain control there's a switch at the bottom so if you turn this hear that click and then if you turn it up you have your audio gain but because that click is on the left side the, um, the RF amplifier gain is set with the IF gain together. But if you turn this knob, the audio gain to the, the maximum to hear a click, and now you adjust your audio gain, now the RF amp is running at full gain, and this controls only the IF gain. It was a very hidden feature, a little bit confusing, so they dropped it on the NC303 but I find it quite useful. In fact, the NC300 has a better audio response for AM use, and then this one is optimal for single sideband use. So I use both of them for that purpose. And uh, for Radio Teletype, of course, I've got the, uh, the HAL units, and uh, I could do that. And then the speakers, this is the matching speaker for the uh, NC303. That's the uh, NTS2, 3.2 ohm speaker. And this is the matching loudspeaker for the NC300. And of course, before all this, you have the HRO 50, HRO 60, and this is the original HRO from 1936, I guess, the original HRO. And all the plug-in coils and the speaker, that's the original speaker, 7,000 ohms uh, for the original HRO. And then I've got another speaker that I use with the ICOM digital radio. I have a transformer to uh, I take the transformer out of there, I'm sorry, and then I just run it straight from eight ohms. And there's a Helicrafter's splatter guard, which is part of the uh, Helicrafter's uh, line from the uh, 60s. So uh, there you have it. Um, I might just want to pull this out to uh, demonstrate something. I'll put the phone down. Okay. And if you look, you will see those converters, the six meter, the two meter, and the one and a quarter meter converter. These are very low noise VHF, UHF um, converters. Fascinating, the technology that's here. Thanks for watching.